It is time for another edition of Donovan Live, and tonight we're following the number one story that has taken over our social media pages all week long. A woman from Bosnia shares her story of gaining her U.S. citizenship and responding to the story of a Huron County father who was deported. Plus, how does your phone company measure up when it comes to your private information? A new report ranks the top mobile carriers. And it's a new series and a new approach to our See the Possible attitude right here at WKYC. So join us for our Music Spotlight series. Donovan Live begins right now. Good evening, everyone, and we'll begin with the top stories for you on this Wednesday from a gruesome find near Dayton to a new future for a member of the 2017 Cleveland Cavaliers. Chris Ty, as usual, has all of that in tonight's 77 seconds at 7. Last night at 7, we reported she was being held against her will by her boyfriend. Today, the news that 56-year-old Lene Soderfeld's body believed to be found in the trunk of a car near Dayton. Her boyfriend, Roy Owens Jr., was found intoxicated in a ditch near that car, threatening to kill himself today. He is now in custody more at 11. It's been a cold case in Akron for two years. Who killed 21-year-old Zakaria Hussein at his family's Glenwood Avenue pizza place? A few weeks after he died, his friend Duncan Unternaher was fatally stabbed, allegedly by his roommate. Tomorrow, authorities in Akron say they have a breakthrough announcement in the case. We'll be there live. Dropping calls are one thing, but the Mansfield School District dropping the hammer on using cell phones at school. Not in class, not in lunch, not before or after school, not between classes. In a four to one vote, the phone must be off and out of sight by the start of the school year. He was a Cavalier this past NBA year, but small forward James Jones is moving to the Phoenix Suns, not as a player, but as vice president of basketball operations. 36-year-old Jones played for five teams in his career, ending with the Cavs, but he played for the Suns 10 years ago. And, you know, Jimmy, one of the interesting things, when you have a team that has a national championship like the Cavs have mm -hmm. under its belt, yeah. you wonder now, what does the future hold for a lot of these guys down the road who have that on their resume? You think of a guy like Richard Jefferson, oh, or absolutely. in this case, it'll be fun to watch them as the years progress. I think when Richard Jefferson leaves, I believe he'll be doing 77 seconds at 7. <laughs> let, me just, <laughs> let me say something yeah. about James Jones, though, okay? LeBron James, this is pretty heady stuff, said he was the best teammate he's ever had. Wow. So James Jones didn't play a lot this year. He didn't give you a lot of minutes, you know, in regular season games or playoff games for that matter. But he was a but he made the Cavaliers play hard in practice. Mm. Sometimes in a locker room and at practice to have a guy like that is as important as having a great guy that can give you 15 points off the bench. And the, it's called chemistry. And the Phoenix Suns think it can be infectious from a coaching and management side. Absolutely, because he's just a great guy and he's a heady guy. And so good luck to him because most of all, he's a class guy. Now. Chris and I have been following this story, and so have all of you. We've been uh, telling you the story as it continues to dominate our social media platforms. Last time we told you about the deportation of Jesus Lara Lopez. Well, after seeing that story, Susanna Lowry reached out to us, reached out to us. She immigrated to the United States herself, but she says she does not feel bad for Lopez and his situation. And Carly Flynn Morgan has that story. I love freedom. There's no way of freedom like here, no way. I love everything. This West Side neighborhood, a world away from war-torn Bosnia. That's the world Susanna Lowry escaped in the early 90s. She lived as a refugee in several different countries. Then she met her American husband through a newspaper ad. They married in Serbia in 1998, but she couldn't come right away. They check for AIDS, for all sexual transmission diseases and for tuberculosis. She underwent health and criminal background checks. She filled out endless paperwork so her and her daughter from a previous marriage could come legally. It's not so much like so difficult, you know. You're just following the rules, you know. She arrived six months after her husband. Now, 19 years later, she's given birth to three daughters and works as a seamstress. She did not feel sympathy when she saw Jesus Lara Lopez's story of deportation. Offend me because I went uh, through legal process and cost me money, cost me time. It's hard. 
I will not like to live in Mexico. I don't like leaving my country. That's why I came here. But it's a legal way. It's right way. Lowry has so far passed on gaining full citizenship and continues to renew her green card. She feels American with pride, having done everything by the book. This is how work in America. You welcome, but you need to respect our rules. If you don't like it, then don't come. All right, that's Carly Flynn Morgan bringing us that story. Now, yesterday we also talked to a Trump supporter who said he doesn't feel bad for Lopez either, but he had questions about the immigration process in all. So, and he didn't have that answered until we brought him along for an interview with an immigration lawyer. And that's right. And Lopez and Susanna's story that you just saw there are some of what is different. So maybe it's worth taking into consideration both stories and both really examples to make up our mind. Well, Susanna Anna does have her citizenship, as Carly laid out. Lopez's family tells us he was trying to get it for himself. And Susanna has citizenship only through a renewed green card. But Lopez was in a different situation. He was in the process of trying to gain his full citizenship. So maybe that's where the arguments and misunderstandings come into play because you can't always know how someone is going about that process. And I think when you put people to the story, when mm -hmm. you actually see human beings who are taking route number one versus route number two, it sometimes informs people's politics. You start saying, okay, I can identify identify with this, as opposed to a lot of times for the last two years seeing two candidates on a podium arguing two right. different points of view. All right, we'll see you in a couple of minutes, okay. too. Now, at 6 p.m., we introduced you to a family who is getting a new lease on life, thanks to the LeBron James Family Foundation. The mom is Emily Ross of Akron. She's a single mom, too, raising four kids without a degree. But right now, she is gearing up for her graduation from the foundation's GED program, which is in Talmadge, and it's in less than half an hour. So it's a big night. She's got a lot of, to look forward to once the ceremony comes to an end, including job possibilities and a brand new wardrobe. And our Carly Flynn Morgan, who is very busy today, will bring you more on that story coming up tonight at 11 o'clock. Now, from a way to get two months of free cell service to another major data breach, here's Danielle with one for the money. Yeah, you got it. All right. Well, this is just on the heels of Verizon telling us that six million of its customers were exposed because somebody left some stuff out there on Amazon's cloud storage. Well, now we have news that two million of Dow Jones's oh. customers have their data at risk. The names, addresses, account information, last four digits of their credit card numbers of some of the sub subscribers of the publications they have, which are Wall Street Journal, Barron's, you may know. Mm -hmm. They were available to anyone, just like Verizon, if you have an Amazon Web Services account. And the company didn't notify anybody because they said, well, no information stolen, none of the full credit card account or login information was there, and it didn't pose a significant risk. But as you pointed out the other night, this is just going to continue to happen, oh, right? Yeah. The information is going to become More available stuff, and leaked And out. that's why you, my friend, in some ways are very smart <laughs> not to do that. And I say thank you to the Dow Jones people for being, you know, saying we didn't need to be notified. Right. I say you, you should check your credit reports every few months. Now, from stealing data to just handing it over to people who ask for it, you know, when you're on social media, whether right. you're shopping online, computer tech services, we give away everything to people. That's why you don't do it. Well, the nonprofit <laughs> Electronic Frontier Foundation released its seventh annual Who Has Your Back report. And what it does is evaluate major tech companies' policies on handing your information over to the government. Well, this study looked at 26 companies' policies regarding making sure third-party vendors can't sell it. Four companies earned one out of five stars, AT&T, Comcast, T-Mobile, and Verizon. I think what you're saying is that my old-fashionedness, the, so well, the rotary telephone, the black the and white telephone. TV, is really... Let's <laughs> not get carried away okay. now, Jimmy. But just quickly, even though AT&T still uh, is on the top of the list, right. they're offering a great deal if you don't really care about that stuff. They just started a prepaid unlimited data plan. What you do is uh, if you get that plan or six gigabytes, you get two free months credited during the third and twelfth month of service and you get unlimited talk text calls to Mexico Canada no activation fees and the beauty is you pay up front no data overages no credit checks mm. so all good over there please head on over to my Twitter account Facebook page I just started them specifically for one for the money you got it I got it all right 
I think what you're, no, okay. <laughs> Still ahead, you're gonna meet Ted Reiser. He is our first subject in our newest series, which celebrates our See the Possible way of thinking right here at Channel 3. Hello, Betsy. I am looking up right now, one for the money, on Twitter and Facebook. I'm gonna be your newest follower by the end of this newscast. I think I'm, I invited you. I'm also keeping an eye on this. Oh yeah, that weather thing, this big complex of thunderstorms. I think that misses us tonight, but it could set us up for storms tomorrow. I'll explain that. Channel 3 News at 7, Donovan Live, is made possible by Adventure Auto Group, where you can buy or lease a new Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, or Subaru and get real deals from real people. Here we go. We have a brand new series to introduce you to tonight. It's our See the Possible Music Spotlight. So this summer, Channel 3 invited five everyday people to share their thoughts on how they see the possible. Everyone wrote their own song, created their own music, and of course then told their own story. We'll introduce you to each person over the next few weeks. Tonight, we introduce you to our first subject, who I got a chance to meet and talk with last night. <laughs> It's a rock and roll I got the music in my soul I'm gonna see the possible See the possible See Joining me right now, Ted Reiser, who is our opening performer on our Music Spotlight series. And probably, Ted, a lot of people in our audience have probably seen you perform because you've been performing so many places and for so long, right? For a long time, yes. So I have, that yeah. is great. So you are a true one-man band. Tell me yeah. about that. Yeah, well, I started playing that music a long time ago, but it developed into uh, me throwing a tambourine on my left foot, and <laughs> it turned into me throwing a kick a drum on my right foot, and I play harmonica. I play harmonica for a long time. Taught by your dad. Taught by my dad, Taught yeah. By your dad. And my mom plays piano, but that was too big of an instrument to lug around it for the thing. But anyways, uh, just doing five things at once, and uh, you just got to kind of like, it's, it's a movement, it's a whole yeah. thing. You can't think about anything. So we're all about C the possible yeah so when you heard that mm -hmm. and you put that to lyrics and to a song what did it mean to you it meant to me uh, about uh, passion for something mm -hmm. and if somebody's got enough passion for something and enough will and uh, desire and you put your heart and your soul into it you can you can achieve just about anything and so see the possible to me is something about see yourself uh, doing something and you know also let me carry it another and see if you agree with mm -hmm. me you can get knocked down at some point yeah. while you're on the journey to do something yes. but if you hang with it and get up kind of dust yourself off right Right. It's still there. Yeah. Uh, as far as music, everybody's a critic of uh, right. music. And I used to always say, uh, don't worry about being the best. There's always going to be somebody out there better than you. Yeah. So or you, richer than you. Uh, right. right or, exactly. Yeah, or right. whatever. Yeah. So you just want to do what makes you feel good. I, if I can please myself musically, then I know I can please people musically. It, it, so. Is it fun to write music? It's a, a lot of fun. It really is. It's uh, probably one of the best things uh, to do as far as being creative and getting your inner creativity out and uh, imagining words and imagining your whole storyline or whatever. So it's well, musically, thanks for helping us spread the word about mm -hmm. See the Possible. Yeah, it's so really nice welcome. meeting It's so you, Ted. nice to meet you, Jimmy. It really is. Thank you, Ted. Yeah, thank you. And it was great meeting Ted, it really was. And listening to his stories and his passion for music and about his 93-year-old dad, I mean, it was really great to see him. Now, you can check out the extended cut of his song over on our YouTube page. And tune in every Wednesday night for the next couple of weeks to meet our other guests in our Music Spotlight series. And Donovan Live continues right after a break. Now for the stories trending online today, including a delicious national holiday, a daring rescue, which was all caught on camera, and a big decision from a Mansfield school. Chris Ty, and yes, this is Betsy Kling wearing the glasses tonight. And I should point this out, she has finals and is studying all night long coming up tomorrow. Okay, there you go. I'm taking out. All right, our first story. 
<laughs> What's the square root of 16? <laughs> it began when Adam Shannon went overboard while fishing on Donner Lake in Chippewa Township on Monday. He began yelling for help, even able to retrieve his phone from the water and call 911. What was the one thing, though, that kept him afloat? His prosthetic leg. Is that, that is amazing. Uh, that is amazing. That's isn't almost it? like a plot line from The Fugitive. You know what I mean? That's or, right. Or you yes. use everything yeah. you can. You use everything you can. But to be able to keep your head through all right. this, find your phone and your prosthetic leg. Well, I mean, he's probably, you know, off kilter, off sure. balance a bit, so his arms are very, you know, they got to really hold on. He must have been exhausted. Yeah, exactly. All right, now we talked about this a little bit earlier in the show. The decision by the Mansfield School District's Board of Education, two new policies banning cell phones and any other handheld electronic device from school grounds. You know, I'm mixed on this. Could this go to the Supreme Court? No, I don't okay, think so. The Apple Court. Uh, but, you know, I think the... Sometimes you have to learn how to walk and chew gun in life, and you have to be able to concentrate with distractions that are in your pocket that you really want to tackle. And when the world says, or the principal says, you can't have it, you're going to have to deal with that at some point in life where you're juggling things. I would love to be on my phone right now. I'd love talking with you guys, but I know that this is not the time. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I'm kind of mixed on it as well. I completely agree that during school and in class, obviously no fault. But if you're, if Absolutely. like, if your little one was having a problem, and you would want her to be able to. There's a lot of split families. Yeah. Yeah. They need to communicate about, you know, Pick rides up. and yeah. all that good stuff. Good point. So That's a very good point. All right. Okay. Right down Broadway or Euclid, Betsy, for you on this one. National Hot Dog Day. Love Did it. you know there's a National Hot Dog and Sausage Council. No, I did not. <laughs> Nearly 19 million hot dogs and more than 4 million sausages will be bought and eaten at Major League Baseball Delicious. games. Delicious. Your favorite hot dog in Northeast Ohio? Do you I'm going to be very, very honest with you, okay? I like hot dogs, but they don't like me. Oh. You're not invited to the council. <laughs> Where is ketchup, mustard, and onion when we need them to come in and like just? I, I you know, sorry about yeah, that. and I do. I really yeah, like I them, too. but they, I mean, they repeat on me all so night.